What's up, everybody? Welcome to yet again another edition of the None of Your Business podcast. I'm Dr. Sean Dill. This is Dr. Lacey Book. We're super excited to be with you. Today, we are talking about an element that we teach on that is super important. And yes, it is actually called the morning after. Now, this is, I just laugh because there's so much talk right now about the Call Her Daddy podcast. And mm. I think um, when we say the morning after, you might think we're going in the Call Her Daddy direction, but we're not. Kind of, we are though, a little bit. Are we though? I mean, it can be. <laughs> well, I didn't know. I this mean, is new for me too, everyone. Not everybody's <laughs> been in, in that situation that you're speaking of, but everybody, everybody has been in a situation where you've made a purchase. And yes. you immediately, I mean, like immediately, an actual purchase, you had a second <laughs> thought, you wondered, did I make the right decision? Right? right. Like you were like, oh my gosh, maybe you were sold. Yeah. Right. So maybe it wasn't, you know, it could happen. Like you're watching QVC or something on TV. Right. And you get sucked in. But maybe there buy. was an actual like sales person and they did this amazing process and you're like, oh my gosh. And then you bought it. I mean, and literally right after you executed the purchase, you had second thoughts. And here's the thing. Whether you believe this or not, I'm telling you, if you are a business person and you sell anything, product, service, it doesn't matter. This happens anything. to you. Yes. And so I want to talk about that. How do we overcome yeah. that feeling? It's oftentimes called buyer's remorse. That's right. the feeling. But the morning after is that's your, that's looking at it from your standpoint, because the buyer's remorse could potentially be on the other side, even though nobody wants to believe that. Nobody has buyer's remorse. No, people have buyer's remorse. Absolutely. Yeah, we've all had but buyer's you, remorse at, well, at some point. Right, but you don't think that people have it relative to what you're oh, selling. Sure. Nobody thinks that. You think that everybody wants what you have, but today's podcast is an acceptance that some people are going to have buyer's remorse. And we want to talk about how you can overcome that. Now, I'm not talking about overcoming the remorse, but the strategies that you can utilize to mitigate intercept or minimize it. that. it. Yes, to intercept I it. I like intercepting it. I so think that would be good. In the service industry, in the service world, providing a service and somebody gets, you know, they get a massage, they get acupuncture, they receive a service, they build a website and then immediately they're like, oh my gosh, did I do the right thing? Or maybe they didn't even build the website, but they put the down payment and then they wonder, did I do the right thing? How can we overcome that and mitigate that feeling? Because a part of the problem too is that we're no longer right there in front of them. Essentially what it boils down to is that the morning after, you just need to reconnect with them and reassure them that they've made the right decision. Well, that's so important. Let's say that again, that they've made the right decision. Here's what it comes down to. Buyer's remorse is not so much that I should not have bought the thing. Right. Right. It's really, did I, did make, I make the, the right, right decision? decision? They're questioning. Yeah. And so here's what's interesting. I think it's super important. They're not questioning you. They're questioning themselves. And sometimes, actually, this doesn't even come from them internally. Sometimes it comes externally from a spouse or a significant other that's like, you did what? I know. I come you home. You bought a whole set of pot and pans for well, $2,000? I come home with new golf gear and I'm they're like, like wait. Sure, you need another. And when I was golf buying shirt? it, when I was another buying one? it, I just totally kidding. needed it at the time. Right. And then I got home, and, and then I'm like, I, began I have to question. I have fifty already. But, but here's again, here's again, what I want everybody to understand is yeah. that you are not questioning the golf shirt in my right. case, or you're not questioning the gear, you're not questioning the service. You're questioning yourself. Yeah. You're wondering, oh, did I do it again? Do I really need fifty golf shirts, or did I did I make another mistake? Did I let down my wife? that's what we're we're, we're, we're talking about yep. so you're saying to reassure them that they've made the right decision how and can we do that yeah there's multiple ways that you can do this and depending on the nature of your business whether it's a product or it's a service you have to decide what's the best fit for the way that you do business but essentially you just need to connect with them so that can be with a phone call We've had a lot of people that, you know, especially in the service industry where people um, purchase um, something relative maybe to their health that requires a big time commitment, mm. you know, getting a phone call from the individual, uh, the doctor, the service provider that they, you know, 
decided to do business with that just says, Hey, I just wanted to connect with you, Sean. And, um, number one, let you know again, that you are definitely in the right place. I know that you are going to absolutely love it here in the office. I already know that we're going to, you know, get phenomenal results from you because we've taken with you because we've taken care of so many people that have similar issues to yours. And I'm so excited that you decided to start care here. I can't wait to see what happens to you in your life. Something right. like that. Or what if you what if you provided a different service? I so I have a client that does jewelry, it makes makes crafted jewelry mm. for a living. Um, I think number one, the great thing to do would just maybe send an email that says, "Hey, beautiful, so glad you picked out that set of earrings. I know that those are going to look fantastic on you with anything that you wear." Just something like that, a short, sweet email. You can even put it in the form of video, right? Mm -hmm. If you have engagement with your customers or clients through text, you could do a little video text message. There's tons of ways to intercept that feeling of potential buyer's remorse. Well, and you can, you know, for everybody, I hope that you will all implement some sort of a morning after strategy. Yep. There's multiple ways that you could do this, but the idea is that you have something that in your business, whatever your whenever you are closing a, a deal, you're closing a sale, that you reassure your prospect now client that they've made the right choice. And the other thing to consider though, is that it's kind of like relationship matters in that you also must consider their love language. For some people, they need words of affirmation. Other people though might respond well to a gift. I find it interesting too, like well, you go to uh, high-end um, designer, designer shops and they might, I remember a purchase that you made, uh, you were gifted a bottle of champagne along with your purchase. They didn't right. just give it to you because you, you're so beautiful. Right. They gave it to you because you were buying, but that also reaffirms because you're like, well, you know, and again, what did that cost them? It, their cost was probably fifty dollars on the on the bottle. It was a nice bottle, but their cost was fifty seventy five dollars against several thousand dollar purchase. And but what it did is it re reaffirmed to you that you made the right choice. So yes. gifts may, might be appropriate. And gifts uh, gifts are great. I mean, a lot of people's love language is gifts. Let's be real. Um, and gifts can come not only at the time of purchase, but you can also send those in the mail. People love getting gifts that they're surprised by too. Mm. So it doesn't actually have to be that day, but you can send something a week later that says, we're so glad that you, you know, entrusted us to, you know, uh, sell your home <laughs> or something you, like no, that. What, I don't what know what don't it is. You don't do is you don't but, send them a gift that generates more business. As I can see, I can see right through the camera. I uh -oh. can hear right through the podcast. I'm, I'm in your ears and I, and I already, I already know what you're thinking. I'm going to send a gift. That's going to be a coupon. It's going to be 50% yeah, no. off for your family. That's not to a get, gift. It's not a gift. No, it's got to be something that's like, like, we didn't get a gift from the designer store that gave us a hundred dollars off their next purchase. Right. We got a hundred dollar bottle of champagne. And there's really cool gifts that you can give that you can have your logo on. Sure. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, you know, and they're high quality, great gifts, but it's not something again, like Sean saying that just promotes your business that doesn't feel good that actually feels a little sleazy probably well, like you're about, getting resold I want you, you know that, about, that's what we're trying to avoid i want you to think about because i already know my answer so i'm gonna give you a chance to think about your most recent morning after that you've loved from another company but for me what happened recently during the pandemic is the um the clothier who i purchased my uh my uh, dress shirts from sent right. me in the in the mail sent me some face masks that were made with uh dress shirt material overruns yeah. right dress shirt overruns dress shirt material and they had made them into these face masks now i don't wear face masks it was super thoughtful uh, but it was super thoughtful yeah. what it endears to what it does is it endears me to them and makes me realize that i am doing business sure i may be overpaying for these shirts but what it does is in my mind it makes me think but i'm making the right decision because these people think about me all the time they have my best interests at heart they're they're looking out for me even though so the, the shirts might, might be costly. They're still thinking about me and my, and they're looking out for me. We talk a lot about that when we talk about being your most trusted advisor. Yeah. So we, uh, this is easy because we just got a kind of a morning after gift in the mail. Mm -hmm. But what was interesting, it wasn't necessarily because we did business with them. It was because of our relationship with him. So Dennis, you sent us in the mail personalized with our wedding photo on it, 
socks. Mm. And that was amazing. Now, he does send that to his clients. Yes, that, that is do, a morning after strategy that but, Dennis and Blitzmetric use and home run. But but what I love about that, and I never thought of it until he did that, is he sent that to us because we're in good relationship with him. So what about your uh, referral partners, your power partners, people that you do work with? Like, have you sent them gifts? Because, that's, because it's still a morning after. It's still after. a morning after. I'm You're in still in relationship. I'm, yes. I'm with them. That's why Did I thought I that was powerful. Did I make the best decision yeah. in being in relationship with this business partner? Yes. Not business partner, but referral for, partner. Yeah, like. Is this the best thing for me? And sending them something small, a token of your appreciation, it also reaffirms that. It's a morning after strategy. I thought it was a morning after, a great morning after strategy. So well, that was mine. Fantastic. I hope that you at home will think about your morning after. I hope that first of all, you'll accept that your, <laughs> your prospects do have some degree of buyer's remorse, some of them. And mm -hmm. what strategies can you implement? And not just on the ones that you think at buyer's on remorse. Everyone. On everyone. Everyone. They appreciate it. Put those into place right away and you'll see massive, massive rewards for doing this. That's all for today. Here's to you reaching more people, making a greater impact and creating the lifestyle that you deserve.